What's good, How you man? Doing? doing good. You? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Hey, good. Great to have you, man. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate you. No, we gotta get everybody spotlight. all the good people, all the great people on the spotlight, man. Hey, man, hey, come on, man. Yeah, showing the uh, showing the younger people how to do it. You I know? feel warm. I like Thank to, you. Uh, Appreciative. I like to bring uh, like notice to people that's doing the right thing in the community, not just you know how these kids or younger people be out here looking up to uh, the wrong people. So, trying to put uh, good people in their face and uh, get it going for them. I but appreciate yeah. you. So I got a couple questions for you, man. But before that, man, we just gonna I'm just gonna ask you like. What you got going on that's new? Anything you want to let the people know that what you got going on? Okay. No, for sure. Um, well, first, I got I got I got to highlight the fact that like this is crazy. This fit is like it, it's this is this is bananas. This is how you, this is how you come every day. You come nah. trim like this every day. Nah, just you. Do you see me? Like, look, I'm, and, and I was just chilling. I mean, I didn't come prepared. I'm just chilling. This is a, this is a jagged edge music video. I promise. Look it yeah, up if you haven't just, seen it. If you if you were young and you ain't seen it, this this is jagged edge. <laughs> nah, I'm chilling. Um. Uh, but no, no, I mean, um, classes, new semester. Um, and no, you're not chilling. This is, yeah, this is, you putting that stuff on as Malia just said. Um, but no, um, no, cla new semester, classes are good, man. Um, teaching, doing radio, getting media together. Y'all are getting media together. Yeah. You doing sideline reporting, Jay Jack doing sideline reporting, Malia getting involved. She about to be on it too. Um, uh, so no, just to see you guys thrive, um, and, and, and take over, um, is, uh, is, is really, is really it's really setting everything in motion for me, man. Like, yeah. yeah. So no, um, uh, life is good, man. Um, I got no complaints, man. Life is good. Life is good, man. Yeah, that's great, man. Like, it's fun actually. Like, when you got somebody uh behind you push you to do it, cause it's you know it'd be different if you thinking about doing something. Then you know you got those thoughts like, is it worth it? But then you got somebody you know you pushing us, telling us do it. You got to do it. Got to get it done. Somebody got to do it. You know what I mean? For sure. So no. like, yeah, it make it better like that. I pre I, love, I love to hear that. And I, I appreciate it. But I, I don't think I do much. I think y'all y'all get after it, man. Yeah. So no, keep getting after it. Keep sure. getting after it, fella. Nah, for the, but the <laughs> uh, first thing I want to ask you though, music taste. I heard you. Uh, oh boy. Your fa your favorite artist was artist was Drake. Um no. Um, that's how that's how you, that's how this is gonna go. That's how this is gonna go. That's how this is gonna go. Okay, all right. Um, John Morant just killed the, your whole state. I thought. That, um, John Morant's my boy though. Okay. So I. It's okay that he could kill yeah. the entire state of Indiana. Uh -huh. That's okay. All right, all right, for real. Um, look, Drake. Oh man, how can I be safe here? Um, uh, no, Drake is definitely not my favorite artist. I'd say Drake is not my favorite artist. Never will be my favorite artist. It's a great artist. Yes, not my favorite. Never has been in the running. Favorite is J Cole. It's, it's the top between J Cole and Dave East. Dave East kind of giving my, um, you know, my gangster rap you know genre that i need feeling that i need and j cole gives me and, and davies is conscious too but j cole um uh gives me that conscious side too but yeah. they're both they both they're both high level rappers they really rap um and they're my they're my kind of rap so that's really like on any given day it's gonna be east cole sue surf nip um and it's a young artist out of uh the uk by the name of nippa and yeah, he he's more of uh he's more of like an r&b guy if you will yeah. but like but like hard R and B, like street R and B. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Dave East, uh, is he? So that, so would that be considered? Like, if somebody was to ask you, favorite artist right now, Dave East is what you're saying. I'm, a, I'm gonna say East. I'm gonna go like, East. Where's he from? Like, what is like? Yeah. I never heard of him before. Oh, you know. Oh, I have actually, disrespect. but well, oh my, my music, goodness. my music taste is not. It's getting better. You listen to Wave. Rod Wave, yeah, yeah, of course. Which actually surprises me because you're yeah. like such an upbeat, confident, not happy Rod person. Wave, but he. And Wave is so he like he got that whole market. Ah, he got that he whole cry. he got that whole market of soul music. Like soul, I say soul because yo, when your soul Rock, hurt, Rock. you listen to Rod Wave. Wait, when Rod life, Wave when life get, hurt, like when he when he help you when he he help you get through stuff. When I think about soul. I'm about to light light a candle. I might clean the house. Okay, yeah, I might but do I'm dishes, saying, but, cook. But that's listen soul. to Rod Wave. I'm soul about to like hurt. cuddle up in my bed with the covers over my face and not want to do anything. But yeah. to each their own, right? But yeah, but yeah. he took. I mean, I we went to the concert. It I was know. everybody had everybody mm. singing. I'm talking about everybody, young, old, man, woman. Every I'm talking about everybody. I'm glad y'all have fun. Yeah, God, yeah. But I'm glad. No, you, let me let me let me not take too much. But Davies, he, he's a like, very talented artist. Yeah, but Davies, he's like uh like what, what kind of rapper would you say? Like who would you compare him to? I mean, he's he's so great that you can't compare him to anybody. Mm -hmm. East, if you see this, put me on the team. I want some paper, man. <laughs> um, no, um, it's tough, man. I mean, he's probably like the the East Coast version of game, but like game from way back when. Oh, not like, okay. you know, game be on some weird stuff now, in my opinion, but it is what it is. Um, he's really, I don't know, he's in his own catalog, man. He, he For me, he's kind of blended uh, like late 90s, early 2000s rap yeah. with 
with like the now. So like your Jada Kiss, your Locks, your Styles P, mm -hmm. um, your Dipsets, um, all of that with like the new age. Um, he's he's found a way to put it all together. So I think that's why I, I'm able to reminisce on my childhood yeah. music taste, but also still maintain relevance and newness and upbeatness with his sound. So yeah, I'm gonna have um, to check him out though. Yeah, no, he's nice. I mean, yeah, he's 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 a spitter. He's a spitter. Yeah, yeah. So that means you were you were interview you would love to interview him, man. You know, I would love to interview him. Um, I might, I might, I'm not gonna lie. I might fan girl, fanboy, whatever you want to call it. So I might not be a good interview. That's the only, they say sometimes you don't want to meet the people that you really like. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, but yeah, I'd love to interview him. But there'd be two reasons why they say that though. I'm nervous. That one reason you could might fan out, might not act yourself. Right. And the second one, they might not be how you think they are. No, for sure. And that that could be he could be a total, you know what I'm saying? Something. Yeah. Um, and then I'd just be like, okay, well now I don't but I but I would still listen to the music because yeah. it's good. Uh -huh. And and I re I relate to it, so I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but no, I, would, I would, bottom line, I would love to interview East. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so I know, like in your past, like uh, you was on radio, worked on a radio station, what Sirius XM? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I did an internship at Sirius XM. It was, but you still were like in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did an internship at Sirius XM, um, in New York. Um, and then after after a year, um. Uh, I, I finished my master's program at BG, and that took me out to Las Vegas and did another internship out there. Um, and uh, same and, place, uh, different places. Different so Sirius XM was in it was in Manhattan in New York, um, and so that was just a one time deal. But it's probably like one of the best experiences, like in, yeah. like employment experiences of my life, just mm -hmm. based on you know time in life, but also just all around experience, learning individuals I was around. Um, so I love that. It's a it's a big part of my life. But yeah. then. Went, finished the school, went to Vegas, interned as I was finishing the school. Um, and then opportunity came along to take on the full-time night jock position at a top 40 station in Vegas, which I was not familiar with at the time. Yeah. Um, but it uh, but it worked out. and was out there in Vegas for five years, um, thrived, loved it, um, and then came back to the O. Yeah. Speaking of Vegas, you lived there, what, you said five years? Yes, sir. Then you come back to Finley. Right. I know it's a huge difference. <laughs> it's a very big culture shock. Huge difference. Uh like how was it out there living in Vegas? Um, it was amazing, man. Um, at first I I was nervous because I like I like the green, like the grass trees. Yeah. I like the change of the seasons, you know, fall. Um, I mean, I'm cool on the snow at this point, but like yeah. I, I like the change of seasons. Um, and so it's all brown and desert out there. Yeah. Um, and so that first year I was like, man, what is this? But then you get to the winter time and it's only like 40 or 50, it don't drop below that. I'm like, mm. okay, well, I might be able to do this. Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful, man. Mountains out there, scenery. Um, it's a melting pot of culture and people of all different backgrounds. Um, so going from, and I had lived different places before on out there, but nonetheless, going from Ohio to there was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is great. Coming from there back to Ohio. It's like, yeah, it's a little different. It's like going, it's like going on break from school and then having to go back. For sure. Because reality set in, like, ah, uh, we back to the basics. Right. You had three or four weeks of just like chill. Yeah. And now, okay, now okay, now I gotta get back in the routine. I gotta yeah. knock stuff out. Like gotta be here eight, nine AM. No, for sure. Um, yeah. But but it was all for a good cause. I came back to Ohio to uh, to pursue my PhD. I got an opportunity um that I had been working on for several years to get into a program to a program, sorry, excuse me. Um, and uh and it was a good position to put my family in. So yeah. that took me back here and it you know, God willing, I'm here and and um and enjoying life. So yeah. So working on a radio station, I know you had interviewed some few people. Uh, I seen. Uh, who would you say would be if you had a uh, name or top? Mm. Let's just say three. Mm. Inter you interview. Inter okay. Um, this is tough because I, I I interview a lot of indie artists, so people on the underground underground rap scene, hip hop scene. Um, but I also I interviewed some solid names, but a lot of the big names weren't like my best interviews. Um. Uh, OT Genesis was a good one though. OT was a very good one. Um, uh, you said top three. Yeah. Um, this wasn't a good interview, but it was a good all around experience. This was Fifth Harmony. Um, yeah. They just uh, they had so much energy and excitement mm -hmm. that they stole the show, which they're gonna do anywhere, right? Um, so that I didn't really do much to be honest, but they made it something that would they made it more than what it was yeah. for for the viewers. Um, and then the third one, um, mm, 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 mm. I don't know. I don't, third one is that's tough. Um, Had to make it hard for you, man, man, oh man. Um, Big Sean was cool. Big Sean was Big cool Sean? for sure. He was down to earth, man. He was very down to earth. 
Um, so Sean was Sean was probably one of my favorite ones. Okay, so that's your top three. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask you about the Juice World. How was that one? Mm, Juice was cool, man. Um, he wasn't the most upbeat. Um, yeah. and, and not everybody has the same crazy energetic personality just because you're in you know the spotlight, right? Yeah. Um, doesn't mean you're going to be one of those you know socialites, and that's just fine. Um, but he was but he was nice, right? Yeah. You could tell he was a good, genuine-hearted person. Um, uh, he was there and he was providing his time, which he didn't have to do. Yeah. Um. Um, and then we had some fun at the end too. He he wrapped a he wrapped a a, a, a Dr. Seuss book, I believe, the Foot Book. Sure. Um, yeah. So we once I got him out of his shell, it was cool. And yeah. that's the job of an interviewer, right? To make your guests comfortable enough to be able to be themselves in the interview. Um, and so it took me a few minutes, but once we got there, we got there. Yeah, didn't get him to freestyle or none. You know, you can freestyle all day. I, if if I would have if I would have uh, if I would have been on it. I was a little, sometimes it gets, I'm not going to lie, sometimes the pressure's on with the label reps in there and they want to hurry stuff up and don't do this, don't do that. Um, and at the position I was in, um, I was I was, I was playing it safe. Yeah. Speaking um, of uh, like uh, that, like a lot of people don't know how that go. All we see is the interviews on YouTube when they post them. Uh, right. But how does that, that whole situation go once you, like all, all the way from getting the artist there to like getting it all set up and the interview and all that like how does that go that's a great question um uh so labels and radio stations they work hand in hand right because they benefit mutually from from each other um so uh label needs to have a good relationship with radio station at least top radio stations so that radio plays their record um and they get this amount of spins and you know go number one on billboard mm. um for what it's worth uh but radio equally needs these artists even matter of fact, even more in my opinion, because yeah. these artists coming to the station, coming to your market, coming to your city, doing meet and greets or interviews or um, whatever it is, or even concerts, um, that brings so much more notoriety to your radio station, to yeah. your platform. Um, and it makes you, for lack of a better word, it makes your station cool, yeah. right? Okay, Juice World was here, Big Sean was here, or Billie Eilish was here, right? Um, as opposed to no names showing up. These right. names don't come to your station. Okay, they might they might not be that cool. Right? Yeah. Why am I? And especially nowadays when people don't really as much, I should say, turn into the FM dial. Mm -hmm. Why are we going to follow this station, social media platform, TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube, and really focus on their personalities? Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's how it works. Labels reach out. Um, they come through. Label reps come through. You have a rep or an A and R for each art individual artist, um, plus potential manager and whoever else. Um, they come through, do the interview, maybe meet some fans or meet um, the rest of the station, um, play a couple records, um, you know, socialize, and then out yeah. the door. So that like the recs, would they be in the room as well? Sometimes it really depends. Okay. Um, I guess it depends on how hands on they are. What they, I mean, it may not even matter half the time, but it could just be okay. We're gonna be in, or we're gonna be right out here. They might be talking to the program director, yeah. operations manager. It just all depends. Is there always some like uh, like questions they tell you not to ask? Um, sometimes, sometimes they'll say, yeah, just so you know, don't go this way or go that way. Um, uh, I remember there was this band five seconds of summer, uh, and, uh, they wanted to, um, I was going to play a game with them. And so I, I let the A&R or the, 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 the rep know, he's like, no, don't play that game. And in my head, you're taking away like creative control as far as the interview side. Yeah. But I also know I'm not like a big, big dog. Right. So, all right, you tell me not to do it. I won't do it. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you just gotta, you gotta, you know, play your cards. I mean, when you're, you know, Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy, Ebro, Sway, you do whatever you want. Right. Rightly so. Yeah. Um, cause people want to be on their show. It's yes. Like, you know what I mean? They're providing like, you're about to yeah. get whatever you're promoting or doing, uh -huh. you're about to get that crazy amount of views right. or listens, watches, whatever. Um, so yeah, it makes sense. So it all just depends. It's tears, right? But I think the biggest thing, as long as you respect everyone involved and do your best to, um, you're going to step on some toes. Yeah. And matter of fact, you should step on toes, right? right? Um, but I don't think you should make it a daily habit. Let me go step on so-and-so toes just yeah. because, but as long as there's some type of respect and, you know, you got to also set your pride aside sometimes. Okay. I'm not going to play this game. Right. Yeah. Um, cause they won't do. They won't like the interview. They won't never come back, or they won't want to yeah. have an interview with AD. They want to do it with somebody else. Right. I want you to come back and request. Yeah, we want to sit down with AD. Yeah, that's my goal. Um, I want to be the best interview you ever had. Um, that is not a Drake reference. Um, sure. so yeah, I mean, yeah, just it's like anything in life. Okay, so the, like the radio stations actually like uh set up. It's like multiple radio stations in there in one studio thing, or just one just main another radio station. Great question, JG. It depends. Um, I mean, you got your traditional, um. Uh, I can't think of the word right now, um, but uh, 
your your heritage radio stations. There we go. A lot of them from way back in like the 80s or 90s even. It may just be like, for instance, an example is the Juice 1073 in Toledo. They're a single station. There's no other FM frequency in there. They're mm-hmm. the sole station, but it's also Toledo, Ohio. If you compare that to a, uh, a market like Chicago or Dallas or even bigger companies in these markets like your CBSs or intercoms or iHearts or Emesis, um, they'll be more clustered so you may have four or five different stations oh, in okay. one building. Yeah. So you'll have an alternative station, a top 40 station, a, their word is urban station, um, a new station, all under the same roof. Yeah. They're different stations, mm-hmm. but they're housed under the same um, uh, corporate cluster. Yeah. So um, where I was at, we had five different stations. We had a top, we were on the top 40. We had a news, we had a, a, a hot AC, adult contemporary, um, can't think we had a we had throwbacks and i can't think of the other one right now but so we hit a lot of different areas but we also ran the market as far as radio was concerned um to that question though that was i'd come from i worked in toledo at the juice and so okay i'm like okay i'm gonna go to a big market let me try out working for corporate yeah um because it comes with opportunity right Mm -hmm. so i got in there there was no hip-hop station um to intern at so i went to the top 40. i was nervous at first okay this is not my music i don't even know this music that well but it panned out great because of the resources Mm. um and then it wasn't like a huge hip-hop presence in there so it also made it good for me okay i'm gonna stand out if i go here because nobody else is doing this right here right yeah so um find out what works for you and make it work to you know to the best best you can right uh yeah how's it uh like raising uh your son while also um having to go to like vegas or um or work at a radio station because like you're still working radio right now technically being no for sure and yeah. i and i'm grateful and i love it um i love I, I, from a different perspective right yeah. but i also really enjoy this perspective um uh so i had we had my son when um we had my son in, in february 23rd 2019 his birthday's coming up it'd be four in in a month but uh i was six months out from leaving Vegas at that time. Mm. I didn't know I was leaving Vegas when he was born, um, but God did. Um, And so six months later, uh, I'm driving across country to Finley, Ohio. Um, So I didn't really spend much time raising him while I was on the radio. Yeah, because Uh, you... Yeah, yeah. Um, moved out here. But um, but while we were there, um, it was, I mean, it was actually easy. uh, cause my schedule, I was, I was a night show host. So I would leave for work at 5 PM. I'd get home at like, you know, midnight, 1 AM. Yeah. Um, and his mom and I would be on different shifts. So she worked, it was, was really why it worked out perfect. She would work during the day, which is when her schedule already was. Um, and, and I would watch him up until time to go to work. Um, and, and, and I only like to use the word watch him, but yeah. I would be with him. We would kick it. Right. Um, and then, and then when she would come home, it's her shift. Yeah. I'll go into work. Um, come back and now it's every man for himself every two hours when he's ready to wake up because he was still a newborn um, but coming out here it's been great man quarantine actually worked out to my advantage very well because uh, I was uh, teaching at BG for part of my assistantship and uh, um, we hit Zoom or we, everything was on Zoom obviously at this point so I was able to teach online uh, and he wasn't in preschool yet or uh, daycare whatever you want to call it so he would be with me yeah. in class online so i i got more time if you will mm-hmm. um so yeah quarantine worked out great for me but no it's great man every day is a blessing with him man no matter what we got going on so do yeah. you see him uh like grasping to that creativity that you got like no, have you for seen sh- it in him yet for sure for sure um i didn't give him much rhythm um if any at all so hopefully uh hopefully he got he get a little more of that from his mom but uh i got a little bit just a little bit just a little bit but um no he's i mean he he loves to do any type of art-based activity you know likes to paint um likes to do sand art he likes to you know color on everything there's paint on the walls at the house i'm not painting the walls until we sell it just for that matter go ahead do what you got to do man um you got you know a little toy instruments he's got a drum set piano flute harmonica um so i try to put things in his hands or in Uh front of him just to see okay you know about this now yeah. where do you want to take it or what do you want to do with it and mind you he's only four i'm never going to push him or pressure him to do right. anything but i want to make sure that he um has knowledge of everything mm-hmm. um so that okay i can do this if i want to or i know about this or you know i want to give him every opportunity possible so yeah um i can i can see the creativity being in there he loves loves old music so he listens to the whispers and loves switch and debarge um 
He's definitely a, he's definitely an old soul. Loves yeah. music. He does love East. Um, throw it out there. Um, he, I mean, he wouldn't have got a choice. Yeah, I, I do. I do play East. I'm like, I mean, yeah. I play East. Um, but there's a song called One Thousand Miles, and his name is Miles. So anytime you see it pop up on YouTube, he plays it, and then we dance to it. Yeah. Um, so it works out. Um, so he he's got he's got my my hip hop in there too. He likes he likes a couple of J Cole records. Apparently, is his joint. Um, so yeah, he's definitely his music he, on the music side. He's gonna be nice. He's gonna be yeah. nice. Yeah. You think he gonna uh, get into sports? Or are you gonna put that in his hands, or you want to stay away from that? Um, no, I definitely want to put sports in his hand. Um, we played. We started t-ball uh, this past summer, fall. Um, we did a. Uh, we did the little the little hoopers in in soccer. Um, he wasn't as social with those. Um, so we kind of we kind of observed, mm. and I don't want to like push him in so much that sorry, excuse me again, that so that he doesn't like it. Um so I'm just like as long as we get out and observe. So like when you see us at the the basketball games yeah. or whatever, we'll go to just put it in his face, touch you, it like you see it. You see it, you're in yeah. the atmosphere. I got, you know, I got the the you know the, the hoop games on at home. Um so yeah, I wanna I want to give him every opportunity to do whatever he wants to do yeah. um and knows about it like you said. Yeah. So yeah, I that's the like goal. It's important like not to like you said, push him. Just let him pick. Cause you know, even if it's not what you want him to do, it's Still, what they want to do, you supposed to support them regardless. As long as it's positive, yeah. right through God. Yeah, that's up. Uh, so he gonna you plan on staying, like let him grow up his whole uh school years here, or are you plan on like getting out of here for him, like uh, let him experience something bigger, give him more opportunities. These questions are beautiful, JG. Um, no, Finley, uh, Finley's home. Um, for several reasons, but Finley, but Finley, I mean one. University of Finley has treated me very well, um, and I've got a lot I want to do here. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think sometimes when you get into some place, there's ne you can never do everything you want to do, right? So it's like, okay, when when do I like just relax? Um, I don't really have that in my body though. So I okay, let's okay, we got to do this. Let's turn this up. Let's take it to the next level. Yeah. I look at broadcast programs like Syracuse or USC or Arizona State University, right? And these are all um even bg right uh but these are all bigger schools right yeah. um uh but i see no reason to why university of finley's broadcast program can't be that robust right um and i think it's just all about the individuals you have involved um from the faculty and staff standpoint but also the student the student standpoint and it's just about everybody coalescing and working together to make it there to take it there yeah this is why you should come to finley for this just like you come here for um you know the equestrian studies program or pre-vet animal science pharmacy um come here for broadcast